dear students after studying this module you shall be able to know what are cosmetic products you shall be able to know the various categories of cosmetics and what are the standard references which are used for cosmetic ingredient nomenclature you shall be able to know how to collect the cosmetic products as evidence from the crime scene very carefully so that the analysis is done in a proper manner and once you have collected these evidence then how the instrumental analysis of these cosmetic products is done so let me repeat the definition again for what are cosmetics as i told you cosmetic products are the substances which are used for external looks enhancement or the cleaning or the perfuming or improving the body appearance the curing of body odor and or keeping them in the good condition so all the products which are used for these purposes will be classified as the cosmetic products and if you look at the other way of defining cosmetics it is that it is an item intended to be rubbed poured sprinkled introduced into or otherwise applied to the human body or part thereof for cleaning beautifying promoting the attractiveness or altering the appearance cosmetics are generally mixtures of chemical compounds some being derived from natural sources while many of them are synthetic that is they are prepared in the lab with the help of chemicals and sometime mixing the different chemicals and coming out with these products nearly all cosmetics are designed to modify the personal appearance for this purpose such items include makeup or the lipstick like i am wearing the nail polish mascara and rouge along with the hair tint dyes and bleach broadly cosmetics include skin care creams lotions powders perfumes lipsticks fingernail and toenail polish eye and facial makeups towelettes permanent wears colored contact lenses the hair colors the hair sprays gels deodorants hand sanitizer baby products bath oils bubble baths bath salts and many other type of products i think you have seen in the market it is flooded with all these cosmetic products and most of them you are also using cosmetics of the first class are primarily important because they may be transferred on contact leaving stains or smears on clothing automobile cigarettes and bedding especially in crime against women the transfer of lipstick and other facial makeup is relatively very common and nail polish has appeared very commonly as the physical evidence in variety of cases eye makeup and mascara are now widely used and may be expected to appear as physical evidence from time to time cosmetics of second category are quite useful in some different manner however when the surface material is altered by the application of any cosmetic substance a new factor is added that may be useful in the individualization of evidence as in the case of hair identification so dear students the cosmetic products if we try to categorize them are categorized into these types that is we have creams emulsions lotions gels and oils for especially the hands then next one we can have face masks with the exception of chemical peeling products next one we have tinted bases like liquids paste powders then we have makeup powders after bath powders and hygienic powders 
after that we have category of toilet soaps deodorant soaps etc then we have the category that is perfumes toilet waters eau cologne and so on then we have another category which is bath and shower preparations which includes salts foams oil gels etc the next category is for depilatories next one we have deodorants and antiperspirants then we have hair care products hair tints and hair bleaches the next one we have products for waving straightening and fixing then we have next one is the cleansing products which includes lotions powders and shampoos then we have conditioning products here also we have lotion creams and oils then we have hair dressing products which again are having some lotions lacquers brillantine and then we have shaving products like creams foams lotions etc then we have the products for making up and removing the makeup from the face so that will be there after they have been used then we have products intended for the application to the lips which include lipsticks and all then products for care of teeth and mouth which are also called as mostly the oral care products then you have products for nail care and makeup products for external intimate hygiene are there then then we also have products which are for sun bathing products then we have products for tanning without the help of sun then you have skin whitening products and anti wrinkle products now after this let us move to what are the list of standard references which are used for cosmetic ingredient nomenclature first of them is international cosmetic ingredient dictionary next one we have british pharmacopeia then we have united states cup pharmacopeia we have chemical abstract services we have japanese standards one is japanese standard cosmetic ingredient and the another japanese standard is it is japanese cosmetic ingredients codex let us now move to knowing the details of some different types of cosmetics most modern cosmetics are based upon relatively ancient formula and crafts let us begin with lipstick it is also known as lip gloss lip liner lip plumper lip balm lip conditioner lip primer and lip boosters it may contain these ingredients that is there will be one coloring agent which is giving color to the particular lipstick so this contains insoluble colors mostly they are the pigments blended with titanium dioxide then there is a strain these are halogenated derivatives of fluorescein which is a synthetic organic compound available as a dark orange or red powder soluble in water and alcohol and this is also known as eosin or bromo acid then another ingredient is the stain solvents in lipsticks high solubility is desirable and therefore mostly the esters glycol and glucose esters are used then we have lipstick bases and these consist of suitable blends of oils fats and waxes of vegetable animal mineral and other synthetic materials perfume and flavors are also often used in variable ways depending upon different different brands and different different colors then there is after lipstick let's move to the rouge rouge is a cosmetic which is used to color the cheeks and it emphasizes the cheek bones most of the material used for the lipsticks such as oils fats and waxes are also most commonly used as rouge so it can be the same material of the lipstick which can be applied from cheeks to the victim's surface and so on 
So originally rho is red iron oxide, but it may vary also different brands may have different rho and lipstick. And so it will also depend upon the person who is using, if he or she, mostly it is she, is using uh, lipstick, then the same lipstick can be used as the robe also. So moving to the eye makeup, many of the oils, fats and waxes which are found in lipsticks are used, are also used for the eye makeup. In addition to these certain hydrophilic materials, when I say hydrophilic, they are water loving, that is they will be soluble in water, such as glycerine or propylene, glycol may also be used. No perfume is added to them, note that, so this can be the point where you can differentiate. Then coming to mascara, mascara is a cosmetic substance for darkening, curling, coloring and thickening the eyelashes that is used with the help of a brush or a rod. It is made with maximum wax so that it will be thickening and remains there as such and these waxes are paraffin wax, carnauba wax, bees wax and along with some water. Different mineral oils like linseed oil, castor oil, eucalyptus oil, lanolin, sesame oil, they can also be found most frequently among the many formulas which are used for preparation of mascara. The color of mascara is mixed with propylene glycol and glycerin and if you look at the most basic effect considered is whether the mascara will be water resistant or not for which water resistant substances that rebuff water like dodecane is used. Coming to the next cosmetic is foundation. Foundation is used to smooth out the entire face and cover the spots or uneven skin coloration. Usually it is in the form of a liquid, cream or powder and as well as most recently a light and fluffy mousse type of preparation, these foundation also they provide excellent coverage. So you will find different different brands, they have different forms of this foundation which they market. Foundation primer can be applied before or after foundation to obtain a smoother finish. Some primers come in powder or liquid form to be applied before the foundation is used as a base. While other primers they come as a spray to be applied after the foundation to help the makeup last longer. After the Foundation, let us move to hair preparation, cosmetics. Many type of materials like shampoos, hair tonic, bleaches and dyes, they are commonly used for hair preparation. And due to the wide variety of these dyes, they are used on hair, especially among the women. But now even the males are using more and more of these hair preparation cosmetics. The development and application of lab procedure for detecting and identifying such materials could add a new dimension to the individualization of hair. And especially when we talk about the males adding up here, the gels which are used to keep their hair in a particular position, so all these things are the ones uh, the cosmetic which are used for hair preparation, all of us have been using from quite a long time. Now coming to the important cosmetic ingredients, both men and women use some sort of cosmetics or skin care product in their day to day routine life. And you might be surprised with this fact that 90% of the cosmetic products are made up of chemical and synthetic materials resulting in increased cases of skin disorders and cancer. Before proceeding further, let us get familiar to the term active ingredient. The active ingredients list is part of a cosmetic, drug or pharmaceutical ingredient label that must adhere to specific regulations which are mandated by the FDA that is Food and Drug Administration.
Active ingredients must be listed first on the ingredient label. The amount and exact function of each active ingredient is controlled and must be approved by the FDA. Active ingredients are considered to have a pharmacological altering effect on skin and these effects must be documented by scientific evaluation and must be approved by the FDA. Active ingredients include the substances such as sunscreen ingredients, skin lightening agents and benzoyl peroxide. Now we will discuss some of the very commonly used ingredients which are present in the cosmetics. First of them is diethanol ME. This is used in lotions, soaps and shampoos and is responsible for the leathering formation that is the formation of leather. When used with other ingredients it can be dangerous for skin and this can cause carcinogenous problem called nitrosodiethanol amine and that is why its percentage should not be very high when these lotions, soaps and shampoos are being used. Then we have parabens. In the past few years there has been increased focus on parabens. They are also known as methyl paraben, propyl paraben, ethyl paraben or butyl paraben. So these collectively are uh, categorized as parabens. Formaldehyde, coming to formaldehyde which is again very commonly found ingredient. This can also be known as DM, DM hydantoin diazolidinyl urea, imide gelidol urea, sodium hydroxymethyl glycinate, N hydroxymethyl glycine, the monosodium salt of this and quaternium 15. So this is the chemical used in large number of cosmetic products and some of them are also used as preservatives as an alternative to paraben. The next uh, chemical ingredient we come is the PPD. PPD stands for phenylene diamine. This is used in cosmetic dyes for dyeing of hairs. Then we have phthalates and this class of compound is present in the nail polish. Coming to next one these are the SLS and SLES. SLS stands for sodium lauryl sulfate and SLES for sodium laureate sulfate. And these are the forming agents which are widely used in soaps and shampoos. Next one is the petrolatum. It is made up of crude oil. It is a jelly like material used since decade and it is frequently used in the cosmetic industry because of its cheap manufacturing. Then next chemical which is commonly found is the triclosan. Triclosan is actually it is used as an antibacterial liquid in hand soaps and in toothpaste manufacturing and also in the acne treatments. The next chemical is toluene. Toluene is an industrial solvent which is used for manufacturing of paints, chemicals which are otherwise derived from this pharmaceuticals, rubber and nail polish. So from cosmetic point of view they will be found in nail polish. Coming to the fragrance, most of the cosmetic products such as sunscreens, skin and body care, shampoos and some baby products have fragrance in them. Then we have triethanol amine which is abbreviated as TEA and it is used to balance the pH of the cosmetic products. It is the common ingredient in cosmetics and is gentle on the skin as it balances the pH. Otherwise, if you have more basic or more acidic pH of that composition, then it will be very harmful for the skin. Next one is hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is used as a skin lightening ingredient in the cosmetic products. This is only legal in Japan, Australia and Europe. And the allowed concentration of this chemical is up to 2% only. 
This is used in Asian and African skin bleaching creams and cream which are used to fade the age spots. This chemical acts to reduce the concentration of melanin that encourages the UVA and the UVB rays penetration into the skin. The next chemical is the butylated hydroxy anisole that is BHA and the butylated hydroxy toluene that is BHT and these are also present in sunscreen and also in colored lipsticks. Coming to next one is the top. It is used as everyday cosmetic and as ingredients of various powders. Then next one is the nanoparticles. This is a more recent ingredient which is very commonly used in eyeshadows and lotions. Then we have 10 hydroxy decanoic acid and if we talk about this, it is a synthetic ingredient that functions as a skin conditioning and occlusive agent. Next one is acetone. Acetone is a strong solvent that is used in the nail polish removers. And then we have acetyl glyceryl ricnuroleate. It is used as a emollient and thickening agent in cosmetics. The next chemical is acetyl hexapeptide 8 which is used in cosmetics. It is a synthetically derived peptide that is being used in a wide range of skin care and makeup products, especially those claiming to have a muscle relaxing effect similar to Botox injections. These typically have to do with the relaxing of muscle contraction when making facial expressions and thus reducing the appearance of expression lines. The next chemical you should be aware of which are used in cosmetic is the acetyl tributyl citrate. It is related to citric acid and is used as a plasticizer most commonly in nail polish and nail hardening products. The next one is aloe barbarensis leaf juice powder and it is the powder form of the aloe plant that is from aloe vera it is taken out. It is obtained from the dried leaves of the aloe plant and it functions as a skin conditioning agent. So this is a natural not synthetic cosmetic. So after knowing about the various chemicals which are found as ingredients in these cosmetic products, let us see how the collection of cosmetic samples is done from the crime scene. Lipstick stains are often carried on cigarette butts. If the cosmetic stains are noticed or any items of evidence at the crime scene, it is important to collect all cosmetic products or preparations that could have given rise to such stain. As lipstick is very common, a careful search for all tubes of this material should be made in handbags, drawers, bathrooms, cupboards and similar places where lipstick might be found, carried or stored. At the same time, if the stain is apparently derived from makeup, all the items should be collected for the references standards. Coming to the nail polish, the evidence of nail polish is most commonly found in the form of chips broken from nails and mostly during the struggle. So if the nail gets chipped out then nail which is coated with the nail polish then nail polish will be a part of these chipped broken nails. The chips should be carefully removed from their location with the help of fine forceps and placed in small evidence containers. With other cosmetic products, it is important that all bottles of nail polish should be collected and sent to the laboratory. Then submit the waxy or liquid samples in glass containers. Do not use plastic containers because mostly these can react with the 
plastic container. So, glass containers are the best one to take these waxy or liquid samples that you may find for the cosmetics. Items with smears or stains should be submitted in the uh, entirety that is the entire bottle or the container should be picked up and collected. Cotton swabs or soft tissues can be used to remove the makeup from the face of any non absorbing surface if this needs to be analyzed. So, coming to the nail polish, the evidence of nail polish is most commonly found in the form of chips broken from nails and mostly during the struggle. So, if the nail gets chipped out then nail which is coated with the nail polish then nail polish will be a part of these chipped broken nails. So, after the picking up of these cosmetic evidence then let us see how to do the analysis. The cosmetic products are generally examined by instrumental methods like GCFID, HPLC and GCMS. The face powder is examined by analytical techniques such as attenuated total reflectance, Fourier transform, infrared spectroscopy which is abbreviated as ATR, FTIR. Then scanning electron microscopy, energy dispersive spectroscopy that is SEM, EDS can be used and similarly matrix assisted laser desorption ionization mass spectroscopy which is abbreviated as MALDIMS can be used. For each method different face powder components are used as reference. So, if you have collected one face powder from the crime scene and in the lab you have so many other reference sample then this one will be just compare that whether it is matching with the first reference or the second or the third and then that is how you can analyze. Markers of lipsticks and makeup foundation are easily transferred to clothing when they come in contact. Different type of analysis then helps the forensic scientist to investigate different marks and the result is almost 99.7 percent accurate in this case. According to a new research presented at the latest American Academy of Forensic Sciences meeting, spectroscopy can be used to absolutely distinguish one lipstick from another even when the shades are very similar and this is like a very common problem because if you are having the same shades although it is from different different brands and then it is difficult. So, here with the help of spectroscopy you can do this distinguishing. Spectroscopy you are already aware is a technique that involves japping a sample with a laser light and to make some of the molecules vibrate. The molecules then emit a change in light frequency which can be read like a chemical barcode. And then you get the spectra and the spectra of the sample can be then matched with the references one and you can come to know whether the two are same or they are different. Recovery of DNA from the lip cosmetics is also one of the latest modification introduced in research in forensic analysis. So, the DNA can be recovered and that matching can give us clue about the various problems that as forensic scientists you are looking into. Let us discuss some of these techniques in detail. Let us begin with TLC which is thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography is a method which is used to separate components from each other from a picture. It is normally experimented on glass aluminum foil or plastic which is then coated by some kind of adsorbent material like silica gel, aluminum oxide and the RF values of each color component is then calculated and they are compared with the reference value. RF values depend upon the polarity of the substance on the paper chromatography. So, all this is 
done and it can help us know what are the various components of that particular cosmetic mixture. And if you look at the procedure, what you need is a developing container. This container can be a beaker with a wash glass over it or a jar that has a lid. The next step is that is required is you pour the solvent in the developing container to only less than 0.5 centimeter and this is done to aid saturation of solvent vapors. After that you put filter paper inside of the container and make it stand parallel to the glass so that it does not take up space in it and then put back on the lid and swirl it. Then you have to keep a TLC plate ready that is marked with a line that measures 0.5 centimeter from the bottom and this mark will be the origin. If not in liquid form, you turn the sample into the liquid form by dissolving in a suitable solvent. Once you have the liquid in the container, dip a capillary tube and fill it up with the solution. Load the solution on the plate with the help of a capillary tube and place this plate in the developing beaker and then cover it again. Leave it there until the solvent is half a centimeter below the top of the plate and observe the spots after the solvent has completely evaporated and this can be matched with the known samples. So this can be repeated with different different known samples and you will come to know which one it is matching. Then we have next technique is the spectrophotometry. This is called as comparison spectrophotometry here. Spectrophotometry is the measurement of different wavelengths of light absorbed and this method uses the light to disperse an object's color into separate components. Although TLC is the most commonly used method, spectrophotometry works best with a varied component sample. TLC is insufficient while working with inorganic colors but separates the organic colors well. Both are equal to each other, it just depends upon the chemist what he or she wants to use as important depending upon the quality of the sample or a clear outcome. Coming to the molecular structure, every color has their own molecular structure and there are some examples of different colors and their molecular structures that you should be aware. These are US certifiable diazo and monoazo color additives for cosmetic use. Knowing their molecular structure will help make the comparison more detailed and it can also eliminate the possible comparison matches to the evidence from crime scene or the subject you are working with. Then coming to polymerase chain reaction that is PCR. It is used to conduct the analysis of DNA in lipstick stain. DNA is found commonly known in hair, nails, blood and saliva. The DNA gives you an entire profile of your identification because every human being has a different DNA. When the subject leaves a lipstick stain, it is equivalent to leaving a fingerprint. And just like a fingerprint, a lipstick stain leaves behind some identity for you. Saliva stuck to the lipstick pigments will contain DNA. That will help you narrow down who the subject precisely is, that is who was uh, carrying this lipstick which has been transferred and you have collected as the evidence. So to analyze the DNA, different polymerase chain reaction that is PCR technique will be conducted upon it that includes restriction fragment length polymorphism that is RFLP, short tandem repeats that is STR single nucleotide polymorphism that is SNP. Apart from autosomal nuclear DNA, there are two other types of DNA which can be used for analysis like mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomal DNA. When we talk about mitochondrial DNA, mitochondrial DNA analysis uses DNA which is extracted 
from the mitochondria which the RFLP or STR cannot do. This method is used when older biological samples don't have nucleated cellular material like bones and hair. Everyone gets their mitochondrial DNA from their mother's egg cell which is then transferred to offspring's embryo. The father's sperm only gives the nuclear DNA and this technique becomes very handy when doing the missing persons investigation. Coming to the Y chromosome analysis, the Y chromosome comes directly from father to son and this technique is especially helpful in finding the biological father or son when multiple males are involved. So if we talk about the DNA result, there are three types of results in DNA testing. Inclusion is when a person becomes a possible source of evidence, when the DNA profile is consistent from the victim or suspect to the crime scene. Exclusion on the other hand is when the DNA does not match up to any of the individual causing them to be eliminated to be a possible source. Inconclusive is when the individual can neither be included or excluded to be a possible source to the DNA sample. Having insufficient DNA sample could cause a mix of more than one DNA in the sample. So dear students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module which is based on study of cosmetics with the forensic point of view. In order to improve the presence and order of human body, cosmetics are used and we have seen the proper definitions of cosmetics. We have also studied about how they are categorized into oil, cream, powder, lotions, emulsions, etc. We also learned that cosmetic evidence is found on cloth, cups or human body and at various other places also in the crime scene. We also learned that how the cosmetic evidence is collected and mostly it is done by the way of swabbing or entire portion is taken for further analysis. Oil sample to again mention they are collected as such in a sterile glass container and I repeat not the plastic containers. Cosmetic products are then further analyzed in forensic lab by variety of instruments like FTIR, SEM, EDX, HPLC, GCMS, MALDMS with great accuracy. And techniques which are used to analyze cosmetic products which we learned some of them are the spectroscopy, chromatography and PCR. And we also studied about the latest innovation which is the extraction of DNA from lip print and how it is possible. Thank you.